This is the video of the birds coming home after a hour flight in the neighborhood. Well, of course, part of that time they were landed in a tree. You can't see if you can tell them. They're the specks just over the left side of that telephone pole. Here they come. All coming home. About six miles of flight today, just in the local neighborhood. hear them before I ever see them. <laughs> there they are! Come on! Come on, birds! They're flying two and two. So I suppose, well, it's hard to tell. I don't know who's flying with who. Hi, guys! Good flying! Good birds! Now you can actually see them. They're <laughs> close enough to be seen. Hi guys! Good birds! That's Mac and Jazz. Good flying. Oh, here comes Tango and Breeze then. Hi guys! Good birds! Everybody coming in. Good boy, Mac. Good boy, Tango. You coming down? Come on, buddy. Good bird. Oh, and on my shoulder. Hello, Missy. How are you, honey? Where are you? There you are. And everybody's home. Another good day of flying. It stopped a little bit, so I want to show you what this looks like. I'm going to speed it up in a 10 times um, roll so you can kind of see what the flight path of these birds uh, ends up being. And so this is just around the house, um, a few laps. The GPS that we use is a Marshall uh, telemetry. It's a Marshall radio is the company out of Utah, but they make all kinds of great GPS and telemetry products for falconers. And we have adapted these for our parrots. It allows us to see where they go um, and just gives us the great detail and stats. And uh, it's just, really really interesting to see but you might see these guys flying over your home on this video because they are at some point here in the not too distant future going to take off and cruise the neighborhood and they will be out in the neighborhood for probably about an hour it was today that they were out and they're mostly hanging out on the patio with us most likely when we send them out, we'll usually sit outside with them and just be with them. They tend to stay home better if we're outside with them. If we come in the house, sometimes they'll take off to visit the neighbors and see what else is to be seen. So this is 10 times faster. This is 20 minutes into their outdoor time this evening. And um, I think it's fairly quickly here that they will take off. Just show some. Oh, I didn't mean to stop that. Just show some other detailed information. Here we go. Now they're taking off, starting to head out of the neighborhood or out of our yard. And so here you see they're kind of cruising over. They head over towards the uh, Circle Mountain and 22nd Street area. There's, we have we have houses marked on the map that are either places that um, we are people 
that we know that are people that are bird friendly and actually appreciate the birds coming by. And then I have a few on here that also are people who don't appreciate the birds coming by. So if we see them go there, we uh, will go pick them up immediately um, so that they don't get into trouble with certain neighbors. This is just uh, north, oh, I didn't mean to do that. This is, so they, right now they are just north of Circle Mountain at uh, 22nd Street, and they're obviously hanging out in a tree because you can see their miles per hour is zero, um, and they're only 91 feet above their start, so that tells me they're sitting up in a tree at this moment. And they were hanging out in that tree for quite a while today. I think probably maybe 15 or 20 minutes they were in that tree. And this is about 1.3 miles away from where we are. And it's a little bit of movement, but likely that's not a lot of movement. It likely is just the GPS isn't completely on the spot accurate. I mean, it gives us accurate information, but it will bounce around depending on the signals that it's getting. So she's not likely moving. She's likely just sitting up in a tree. And again, zero miles per hour. Now they're taking off again. So now they're gonna go a little bit south of Circle Mountain and they're over there closer to, uh, what is that, 20th? And I think this is, um, this may not be. But anyway, there's some, there's some other folks over in this area that have a macaw as well. And sometimes the birds will go to visit. The other thing that's kind of cool about this um, program or this uh, uh, software is that I can go into um, 3D mode. Now they popped up, just went into another house in the neighborhood. And now they're gonna take off again. But they're just visiting, taking off, landing, taking off, landing. Until now where you start to see where their speed increases, 25, 25, 30 miles an hour. And this is their headed home. And so you can see they've mostly stayed at Circle Mountain or just south of it, and this is them kind of flying in to be home. Kind of fun. Uh, the other thing is that we can put it into 3D mode. Maybe. So now what it will show us is that we can zoom down in here. It's going to zoom us in. You see there we are in the valley. So you can see their flight path. So here's Circle Mountain, our little community. And it's, I don't know that you can really see all this, but it does show their elevation. So it shows when they're uh, higher or lower, the climb rate, uh, the speed, their mile per hour speed, what they're doing. It's really, it's, it's a real interesting, um, there's Apache Mountain. You can kind of see Apache Mountain in the distance there. And here's where they, I'm gonna make some flights. Head over to Joe's house. And then they take off. And you can see we are still at 10 times the speed, so I can make this go that fast, not any faster than that.
Anyway, I put this at the end of the video, so if it's too boring for you, it's easy to cut out. But um, it does, it's just fun to see the uh, different angles and what's going on with the birds. Oh, they take off. Uh, you can see them around the neighborhood, and if you happen to live anywhere below that flight path, then you'll be able to know where they might come to the next time, because this is pretty typical for them. They, they're they just north of Circle Mountain here, and that's like 22nd, and that was the house they hung out there in the trees for a while. Another gentleman up here who has quite a few birds, and sometimes they'll go visit him. And then there's some folks over here with horses just south of Circle Mountain at 22nd. And they love that eucalyptus tree, so sometimes they'll head down that way. But this is how we keep an eye on the birds. This is how we can watch them from a distance. But we do always appreciate people on the ground keeping an eye on them. And if they're doing anything that they shouldn't, to let us know. Um, we can always, if they're out, we're close. We're not going to, we don't leave them out while we're not home. So we can always come pick them up if we need to. It's just a simple quick phone call or text message. Because sometimes our cell service out here isn't great, but texting usually works. So always feel free to text uh, if you have any questions or if there's any problems with the birds or or if you just want to, you know, know where they're at, see what's going on with them, we're happy to share. They're such cool creatures and we just feel privileged to be able to have this kind of life with them. That's why we're so grateful to be in a valley where, where people are gracious and um, kind of help us co-parent. <laughs> Come in a little bit closer, something it's fun to see. Hopefully this is not your home and I'm not making you uncomfortable with my flyover. And they're just getting ready to make their homeward flight, but they can see where they've stopped a few places and spent a lot of time up in the air, but a few times they've come down and either landed or come down low to look at somebody. Maybe land on a garage roof or maybe just visit. And coming back home. And back home. Anyway, I thought you might like to see that. <laughs>